Dear friends, today we will talk about the sniper Ivan Kachov. We remembered not whom he killed during this monstrous war of extermination, but about two lives that he saved. Ivan Tkachev went to the front in 1941. During his school years, he was carried away by the movement of Voroshilov riflemen and became a first experience in handling weapons. But at the front he didn't immediately take up a sniper rifle, and the first year he served in intelligence. Once I had the opportunity to show my skill and accuracy, and once from 800 meters I hit from a rifle of a German, who was brazenly pacing on the front line, said Ivan Tkachev. The division commander told me, you should be a sniper. After that I was handed a rifle with a telescopic sight and a book of a sniper. It was difficult too. After all, if you are a sniper, everyone hunts you. If the mortar man or the machine gunner will notice you, they start fiercely fire. If enemy capture sniper, best case they kill him immediately. Our command adored and cherished snipers, but the enemies hated us so fiercely and tried to destroy us. It was difficult for a Soviet sniper to escape, unlike a German one. The telescopic sight from a German rifle was easily dropped. So a captured fascist sniper could pretend to be an ordinary soldier and thereby save his own life. But the telescopic sight on the Mosin rifle, which was in service with our snipers, were fastened tightly. A soldier captured with such weapons had no chance of surviving. They didn't take snipers prisoner, said Ivan Tkachev. The ability to shoot accurately is only half the battle. But the ability to choose a position, disguise, wait and think, constantly improve, these are the factors that played a major role in resolving the issue. You will die or survive. We went on assignment in pairs, a shooter and an observer. The latter covered and confirmed each enemy killed by a colleague with a personal signature in the sniper book. Only Germans shot during the mission were counted. The Nazis, who fell from a shooter's bullet in battle, were not counted. Ten times Ivan Tkachev miraculously remained alive in sniper duels. An enemy bullet only broke the sight of his rifle. Having pulled the trigger, immediately in a split second dived his head under the sight. But still one of the enemy's bullets left a mark on his right cheek. In the hand of experienced snipers against each other, everything was decided by the moments. There was no time for sentimentality in the war. All through, as the veteran admitted, he twice violated the main law of war – kill or be killed. We went out on a mission. Lie down, watch. I looked an enemy sniper, aim and see long hair. Girl, it was a pity. I didn't want to shoot. Then I see she took a rifle in her hands. What to do? I took aim and shot her in the arm. After that she was sent to the hospital. She didn't take the rifle in her hands anymore. According to Ivan Tkachev, later in the German frontline newspaper, they saw a photo of this girl with a bandaged hand and in the article they wrote that a Soviet sniper fell in love with a German. After this incident, the surgeon Tkachev was summoned for a conversation by NKVD officers. They asked, why didn't you kill? And I say, that a woman, it's a pity after all. The division commander interceded and I was released. This case is not the only one for Ivan Tkachev. In 1943, near the town of Turki Perevoz, Nevelsky district, Pskov region, the soldiers received letters. Among others, a letter came with a note to give this letter to the nameless, bravest warrior. This letter was from a girl, Valentina, from Leningrad. This girl lost her family during the blockade, containing a request to avenge her parents. It was handed over the most well-aimed sniper Ivan Tkachev. The lines of the letter found a response in the soul of Ivan Tkachev, and soon he and his partner entered the position on the left flank. Through a sniper scope, Ivan Tkachev examined the front line of German's defense. The positions were at a glance. The Germans were well entrenched here and felt safe. We lay down. Through the side were visible household items of the Germans. Washstands, places for cleaning shoes, dugouts. We took two officer at gunpoint. Few rifle shots and they were killed. Soldiers came for the officers. They tried to drag the bodies away and we shot them too. 
And suddenly, a young German soldier appeared, carrying an ammo box to the trench. He walks carefully, so as not to fall. Not only is there darkness around him, but also a patch on his right eye. Suddenly, he tripped over the corpse of a soldier, just killed by a sniper. Willy, that was the name of the German, looked closer and was stunned. The bodies of his dead colleague were lying on the ground. For several seconds he just stood, unable to move. A sharp jolt and he's already on the ground. The lieutenant who knocked him down didn't even have time to scold the reckless soldier. Shot and he fell, struck by the first bullet of a Soviet sniper. The young man closed his eyes, as if preparing to catch the second bullet. However, there was no shot. Then he often recalled that autumn evening and couldn't understand why he survived. He accidentally received the answer to this question nine years later in Moscow. My partner shot the officer and I got the soldier, remember Ivan Tkachev. I could still very clearly distinguish through the optics both his eyes and the scar on his cheek, but I couldn't longer see the markings on the scope. Diopters floated. Let him alive, I thought, and removed my finger from the trigger. In 1944, Going out on another hunt, he found himself under powerful shelling of the advancing German units. Wounded and shell-shocked, he was pulled from the battlefield by the foreman of the medical service, Ilya Fedotov. After the hospital, he wanted to pick up a sniper rifle again and return to his company. But the command had their own plans for him. So, until the end of the war, Ivan Tkachev served as the commander of an anti-tank gun crew and hit Nazi tanks like a sniper. Ivan Tkachev met the end of the war in Kurland, western part of Latvia. They were summoned to the headquarters and the commander of the army said, Well, soldiers, this is the end of the war for you. Ivan Tkachev, it seemed, had already forgotten about the German to whom he gave life. I forgot until the moment when the war itself reminded me about this case on the Eastern Front. Here is how he talked about it. In 1952, we met with a frontline comrade, Kolya Popov, and ended up at an exhibition of the GDR in Gorky Park. I was walking and met a German group, and suddenly my attention was attracted by a tall man, with an artificial eye a scar on his cheek, all kind of flimsy. It was the face of a man I didn't shoot at in the fall of 1943 near Neville. I came up and asked about Turkey Perevoz. 33rd year. He replied in broken Russian that yes, he was there and remembered that day when he recently returned from the hospital and that evening dragged a box of ammo to a machine gun and the officer knocked him down, cursing an idiot. It turned out that a week later he was assigned to be wounded in the rear. Ivan Terenchevich told the German that he was in his gun side that day. He said that he now lives in Moscow and studies at the Military Law Academy. We talked and parted, but the foreigner remembered everything, both the name and the address of the academy where he studied. He returned to Berlin, told his wife about the meeting, and soon a letter arrived in Moscow. Ivan got acquainted with its content in the office of the head of the special department of KGB. In the envelope there is a photo, on it the same lanky German Willy and three girls, all is one dark-haired, fragile, like their father. Dear friend, if it were not for your generosity, then these lovely children might not have been. Come visit, we are looking forward to it. Ivan Tkachev never saw either the letter or the photo. The times were harsh, and if not for the frontline commanders who confirmed the impeccable sniper past, who knows how abruptly the fate of the former sergeant Tkachev would have turned. 93 years old, Ivan Tkachev, living through the dilapidated pages of his personal book of a sniper, it contains records of exterminated enemies, in total 169. However, every time on Victory Day, Ivan Tkachev recalls not those whom he took life, but to whom he gave it, a German sniper girl with long hair and tall and awkward soldier Willy. Dear friends, I am very interested in your opinion. Do you think Ivan Tkachev did the right thing by violating the harsh law of war? Well, I have everything for today. Subscribe for the channel and put likes on this video if you like the story. And remember, the world is in the hand of each of us. See you later.